The question for today is prop performance differences. I feel the need for speed. Uh, well, okay. In this case, actually, I feel the no need for numbers. I'm going to test the metal Hartzell and the MT Composite Ultra on the Husky to try to determine the differences and see if there is and what the value is there. So stick with me on Flywire. Hi, I'm Scott Purdue, and today on Flywire, we're going to do another backyard flight test video. This time, it is to establish performance differences between the metal 76-inch Hartzell prop and the 80-inch MT Composite Ultra prop. I actually flew these two props on different, two different days, pretty much under the same atmospheric conditions. We're in this uh, high mass over uh, Texas that just, it's a summertime thing. Same wind, pretty close to the same temperatures and density altitudes hot. <coughs> Excuse me. The issue is time required to actually change <coughs> the props. Continental engines use a prop flange with nuts and bolts and I can swap a prop in an hour by myself. Not so much for the light coming. This O360A1P uses an SA number two prop flange and that flange incorporates a threaded portion of the, uh, of the security system and you have to be very careful when putting the prop on the airplane and not cross thread or anything like that. And for a flat frange, this is easy. It's easy to hold up a prop by hand and insert a bolt or two and you've got it mounted and you can do the rest of it. For this SA2 flange, even a lightweight prop, you know, like the MT, which is 42 pounds, requires either a second person or a prop sling. I just can't do all that stuff and make it happen. I typically work alone, so I had to get the prop shop crane out to help with this job. Long story short is it took every bit of eight hours to swap a prop. By the time that was accomplished, conditions were drastically different, not to mention the fact that I was tired of the whole dang thing, and that meant flight test over two days. So there you go. <clears throat> Another alibi here is that I'm still working out the audio video uh, situation on my Husky to film my Husky adventures, which means that yeah, I was hit or miss uh, with both of those things at the same time for this, uh, this video. I did get data so I can speak to that and we'll use what footage I have to, get, to go as, as B-roll to tell the story. I'm not testing for data for an STC, I'm testing for real world performance that is relevant to how I fly the airplane. So I don't have to be super, super accurate. I needed to get a set of baseline for the Archer prop using the same profile for each test. So I chose the simpler profile. Uh, I did a neutral stick, flaps 30 takeoff run. The POH recommends that for the shortest takeoff roll. Basically flat and let it fly. Uh, I think that's true. I use that profile often, but not always. Actually, I haven't actually been able to measure it on the ground yet. I simply count the seconds from brake release to mains off the ground. You know, later on, I'll work on the actual distances, but I need people to do that instead of all by myself. For the climb, I flew 80 miles an hour. That's not the recommended climb speed necessarily for the airplane, but it works for me, and I do it mostly for cooling as a compromise. It's the speed, uh, I want to keep those oil temperatures and CHTs down. It's the speed I typically use, so the climb rate numbers will be different from the test performed by others, but it's good for me, for how I fly the airplane. To test for true airspeed, I fly a triangular course that has 10 mile legs. For fa a faster airplane, like the Bonanza, 10-mile legs work out well to settle out on the course and damp out any effects of turning and winds and track to the next waypoint so everything's stable. For the slow airplane, I probably could have done 5-mile legs, but I didn't. I didn't have uh, waypoints for that, so I did what I had uh, already set up. To get the true airspeed, you sum the ground speeds of each leg and then divide by 3 to get the true airspeed. This way you can reveal any errors in your pedostatic system and it turns out the error in my system in the Husky is about five miles an hour. I have two AV-30s in the airplane with a temperature probe, so I get a readout of true airspeed and density altitude, and, and that's with the error, by the way. This gives me a comparison. Uh, I have a fuel flow, so I also knew how much fuel to add back to get to the same weight for the second flight, so conditions were similar. So let's look at the numbers. The Hartzell weighs in at 62.5 pounds. Kind of heavy for a light little plane. 
um, it's all on the nose and that brings the CG forward in a way that's good because that means it's much harder to load the airplane, stay within gross weight, and then exceed the CG range. The MT Com Ultra Composite weighs in at 42 pounds. That 20 pound difference moves the CG aft quite a bit. And I could put a lightweight battery in the engine compartment, save a little more weight, and it would nearly zero out, zero out that CG issue, but the reality is in sample loading problems I did, I couldn't push the uh, CG aft enough, even at gross weight. Maybe if I lost 20 pounds or so myself, which, you know, at this point, it's unlikely. <clears throat> what can I say? In a light plane like this, that 20 pounds is a lot. That's 1% of gross weight in one fell swoop. That's huge. My new payload for this airplane is 673 pounds. For me, this prop and this and the smoothness of the prop are the big reasons I switched. Besides, I like elegant design. I did a video on that before. Uh, uh, and uh, I have another in mind. I might do one here pretty soon when I get some time. Uh, for both flights, the temps were about two degrees different and the density altitudes were 100 feet different. The, uh, so that's pretty close. The winds for takeoff were pretty much exactly the same and the winds at altitude were identical. The true airspeed in the cockpit was rating 121 in cruise for both flights, uh, as well as the indicated, etc. Uh, the first, the takeoff. The Hartzell has adequate performance and takeoff occurred at about, in about 8 seconds at 40 miles an hour. That's not bad at all. The takeoff run for the MT Ultra was 7 seconds and the liftoff was at 37 miles an hour. My short field technique is to get in the air, level and ground effect, accelerate while retracting flaps. And that point, at that point, then I establish climb speed. Uh, takeoff performance is very close, very close. When you run the numbers, um, even that, that one knot actually, or one second actually comes out to about a 12% difference in performance, which is significant, but still really close. Without knowing the actual thrust produced by the two propellers, the delta could be chalked up at least partially by the weight difference, which frankly is still a valid performance uh, difference between the two props because they really do weigh different. Um, and that affects your airplane. For the climb rate, the Harsel posted an average of 1,000 feet per minute, which is respectable. The MT Ultra posted an average of 1,200 feet per minute. And the numbers here work out to a 20% improvement. That's much better. That is significant. And the MT is, I think, just more efficient at converting power to thrust. I would expect the MT to per per outperform the Hartzell in a high-hot DA situation. I give it a thumbs up for that. As a comparison, the MT brochure posts performance differences for various props in comparison with that MT Ultra, and their tests show that the Hartzell did about a 12, posted about a 1,210 foot per minute climb, and the MT uh, 1,430 foot per minute climb rate. I don't suspect the numbers here, but as I said, how they perform the test while valid is not the way I fly the airplane, and what I want to know is what, what are the numbers are that relate to how I fly the airplane. Your mileage may vary. You do it your way. For the cruise true airspeed test, I use the same power settings at 2000 MSL, 24 inches and 2450 RPM. I set a fuel flow of nine and a half gallons an hour. And I usually don't push the engine that hard in cruise except at altitude, but okay, this is a cruise setting, so let's try it. This resulted in pretty much the same indications on the in instruments in the airplane for both flights. Indicated airspeed was about 110, and true airspeed was 121. The difference was the ground speed. Okay, remember using the triangular legs, you cancel out the effects of actual wind. The Hartzell posted a true airspeed of 126.7 miles an hour, and the MT Ultra posted right on 127 miles an hour. That makes the performance delta our squeaker, there's no doubt about it, at 0.3 miles an hour within the margin of error, really. For a percentage, the MT is 0.003% faster than the Hartzell, as I said. That's probably within the error, uh, error rates. To be honest, I really didn't expect a big difference in cruise. I've got a pretty good idea of cruise speeds at altitude, and uh, one of these days I'll figure that out for the MT. All the MT brochure out is, is higher altitudes. I don't spend much time there in the Husky on a regular basis. So I'll leave that for later. It takes a while to climb up there. Got to have a reason to do it. 
Got to be going someplace. <clears throat> For me, the takeoff and climb performance is significant, as well as the weight savings. You be the judge for your, yourself and your mission. I like it. But now I gotta paint that silly spinner. I'm gonna take uh, the suggestion from the Rolling Stones and paint it black. If you get the reference, great. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, anyway, I'd like to take a second and thank my Patreon supporters right here. I really appreciate your, your support. And if you'd like to, to support the channel, I'll leave a link below. Uh, to the Patreon page, Flower Patreon page. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel on YouTube, it looks a bit like this here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Flower.